I have a huge update for you guys, the people of Hong Kong, regarding your BNO passports and the path to UK citizenship. This just came out a few days ago and now we finally have all the details on how to apply and how much it costs and everything in the middle. Welcome to the channel, my name is Oran and today we're going to take a look at all the new information that came out on the BNO passports and the path to UK citizenship. After the national security law was imposed by the CCP government in Hong Kong, people with BNO passports have long been waiting for this information and now it's finally here. So let's start out by reading this article and then we will go into the actual rules and how much it's going to cost. So this article says the government delivers on commitment to national British nationals overseas in Hong Kong. The new immigration route for British nationals overseas citizens from Hong Kong will be open for application on 31st of January 2021. So already here we're getting the set date of when you can actually apply and the set date will be the, the 31st of January. We knew for a long time that it was going to be January but we didn't have a set date but now we do. British National Overseas BNO citizens will be able to move to the UK to study and work. They will have the right to work in almost any role consistent with UK employment laws and subject to having the appropriate skills and qualifications. All those with BNO status are eligible as are their family dependents provided they are usually resident in Hong Kong. There will be no quota on numbers. There will be no limit on the numbers. This route will also provide a clear pathway to be granted British citizenship. The UK government is changing the entitlements attached to BNO status in response to the breach of the Sino-British joint declaration by the Chinese government in restricting the rights and freedoms of Hong Kong people and eroding the high degree of autonomy of the SAR. So that's a very general statement on what the British government is uh, recommitting to and, uh, and we're going to go into the very the actual rules and the new changes in just a moment but let's see what the British Consulate General in Hong Kong Andrew Hain has to say on Twitter in this short message. Hi, I'm Andrew Hain, British Consul General in Hong Kong. The government has announced today more details of the BNO visa scheme. The visa scheme opens on the 31st of January next year and you find all the details at gov.uk. Andrew Hain released this message a couple of days ago and as you can see in the comment section right under the Twitter message, a lot of people from Hong Kong were really grateful. Alright, so with the good news, let's get into the new details of the process right here. About this visa, you'll be able to apply to enter or remain in the UK for a period of 30 months, which you can extend by a further 30 months or a period of five years, you'll be able to apply from outside or inside the UK. So you initially, you can apply for the five years if you know you're going for a full UK citizenship. You'll be able to apply for settlement after five years if you meet the requirements and British citizenship 12 months after settlement. So settlements will happen after the five years and that's a period of 12 months and if you meet the requirements then you can go ahead and get your UK citizenship. Let's move on to the what you can and cannot do section. So what you can do is work and study including applying for higher education courses. You can use the national health services We'll get into that a little later because there will be a fee that you will have to pay which is called Immigration Health Services fee. We'll get into that a little later when we get into the money section of, of the price and the fee for the, for the immigration part. You cannot claim public funds, social welfare benefits. So you can't get any kind of, of social welfare benefits. In other words, you have to prove that you're able to financially support yourself for the fi for the duration of of the five years if that's what you're choosing 
Your children will be able to attend school if they are under 18. All state schools are free. Attend education and training if they are aged 16 to 19. Great, so who can apply? This is really important because before it used to be that you would have to get your BNO passport renewed if it was out of date or if you had lost it and then you could apply but now they're saying something different here. You can apply for the Hong Kong BNO visa if you are a BNO citizen. You don't need a valid BNO passport to show this and you don't need a to request a new passport if it's expired or has been lost. However, if you have an expired BNO passport, you can submit it with your application. So you don't need one anymore. They have registered whether you have one or not. And even if you can't find it or it's expired, you actually don't have to pay the fee of renewing it. So that's another great thing about this agreement. You'll need a valid travel document and can and you can use a valid Hong Kong special administrative region passport to travel if you have one. Let's move on to family members. Your family members who normally live with you may also be able to apply, including your spouse, civil partner or unmarried partner, child under the age of 18, adult child born on or after 1st of July 1997 and their spouse or child under the age of 18. Other family members, parent, grandparent, brother, sister, son or daughter in exceptional circumstances where there is a high level of dependency. In a situation where maybe your parents are, are very old and they live with you or you take care of them, uh, that would apply. You and your family members, and this is very important, you and your family members must all apply together at the same time. If your family members do not apply with you, they will not be able to apply for the Hong Kong BNO visa to join you later. This is very important. You and your family members, you must all apply together at the same time. Because if you don't, then there's a chance that you will get in based on your BNO passport, but since you didn't apply at the same time, your family members might not get in. So it's very important that you apply with the people in your family that, you, that you're taking with you to the UK so they don't get left behind and, and won't have a chance to come in. Children under 18 should apply with both of their parents, although there are some exceptions. Residency requirements are in relation to where you've been living um, for the last long time. If you're applying from outside the UK, you and your family member members must normally live in Hong Kong. If you're already in the UK, you must normally live in Hong Kong, the UK, Jersey, Guernsey or the Isle of Man. They say that more details will be uh, released uh, more detailed information will be published before the visa route opens. They say this a few times in the document, uh, so there, there might be a few slight changes, but it doesn't look like it's anything overwhelmingly important. So here's another really important part. It's explaining the money that you will need to apply for, for the UK citizenship and for the initial five years that you're going to the UK, right? So it says how to apply and I want to say it's got it's got really good news and it's got some slight bad news in terms of money that you will have to spend. This is by far one of one of the most one of the cheapest ways that the UK government is offering a path to UK citizenship for anyone ever. So this is a really good deal but there is there will be fees that we'll, we will go into right now. The fees. So you'll need to pay the following fee and each of your family members will need to pay the fee too. It says £180 to apply to stay for 30 months. So either you can do this two times or you can pay the full £250 to apply to, to stay for five years. So you either pay the 250 once for the five years or you pay 180 twice.
if you're considering the five years those are your two options now this is where it gets a little tricky because it's not it's not a bad thing it's something that most people have to pay but it is still quite expensive so take a look at this you'll immigration health surcharge you'll need to pay the immigration health surcharge for each adult this will be 1560 if you are applying to stay for 30 months or 3120 if you are applying to stay for 5 years for each child under the age of 18 this will be 1175 and 2350 for the 5 years once you've paid the IHS you'll be able to use the national health services in the UK this is quite expensive but this is money that all british people are paying to the national health services to get your basic coverage in terms of medical emergencies or the like so at least you're getting something for your money it's not just a fee for something and then you don't get anything right so this is uh, i went into the the uk government's website and tried to find out when exactly do you have to pay that amount of money and here's what it says on another website. If you're making your immigration application online, you pay the surcharge as part of your application or when you book an appointment. If you are applying by post, which I don't think many people are today, but you pay the surcharge online before you send your application, you'll need to include the IHS reference number on your application form. So obviously that's the most expensive part of applying for UK citizenship. But when it's finally done, we can talk about the settlement and citizenship, the good part. You'll be able to apply to settle in the UK, also called indefinite leave to remain once you've lived here for five years. If you already spent time in the UK on 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 a route to settlement, for example, a general work tier 2 visa, this time will count towards your five years. That means if you worked a couple of years in the UK, I don't think that's that many people, especially BNO passport holders, but there might be a few. If you worked a couple of years, it will only take you three years to get your UK citizenship. You'll need to meet the English language requirements which even and if you're watching this video probably your english is at a really good level and then you'll have no trouble going through the english language requirements so you'll be you'll be fine you'll also need to pass the life in the uk test now that's slightly more difficult it it doesn't take a genius but you will have to read a few documents but i'm guessing if you're spending five years in the uk at that point in time you'll know enough to easily pass the life in the UK test. You'll need to have spent no more than 180 days outside the UK in any 12 months in the previous five years, which kind of makes sense. You like that's half, almost half of the time of a full year. You can not spend half of a year outside of the UK uh, when you're doing these five years in the UK. It kind of makes sense. You have to pay a fee to apply for settlement, which we already talked about. Finally, you'll be able to apply for citizenship once you've been settled in the UK for 12 months. And that's the final part of it. Once you've done your five years, then you, you apply for settlement. You need those 12 months and then you can apply for UK citizenship. And that's pretty much everything there is to it. I'm really happy that this lifeboat is being offered to the people of Hong Kong because as you know better than I do, the CCP government has been cracking down of the, on the freedom and the rights and the independence of the people of Hong Kong. And I keep reading articles like headlines like these, stop putting up with political censorship in schools where even in the beginning the the national security law would give china the power to come into hong kong and take a bunch of rights so there would no longer be these protests that we've seen for the last couple of years but now it's getting even worse than that not being able to protest is bad in itself 
but now these teachers in in schools are being are beginning to be censored they're beginning to be cancelled which in hong kong means that you can no longer work because of the CCP, ccp government you can no longer work as a teacher for the rest of your days these teachers were cancelled because they were talking about hong kong independence which is crazy because hong kong independence until a couple of months ago late in june when the national security law was imposed is something that all the people of hong kong was very proud of this whole mindset of one country two systems with china they have a completely different system and now these school teachers are being cancelled which means that they won't ever teach again because they're talking about the real history of hong kong the real independence they had up until recently that's no longer allowed that's pretty radical and that says something about how much China and the CCP government is beginning to gain more and more control in Hong Kong. So the situation is not really getting any better and China has repeatedly warned that these BNO passports might be illegitimized, that they might not recognize them as legal travel documents. This article goes into talking about it's only three days old, but, but the Chinese government has been talking about ever since June how they might begin to stop people from using these BNO passports to travel specifically to the UK because obviously China, as it says here, China warns the UK not to offer citizenship to Hong Kong residents. So if you're thinking about accepting this offer from the UK, I suggest that you do so as fast as possible because china might not be able to stop bno passports from being used right now but they're gaining more and more control in hong kong and even though you know that they are not doing it right now i'm not sure the future is as certain as right now i don't want to see anyone having to leave their country behind having to leave all of the family and the history that they've had in in your country behind but if you intend to do so, I suggest that you do it as soon as possible. I, I suggest you take this lifeboat that the UK is offering to you as fast as you can. I used a lot of uh, articles in this video and I will make sure to leave them all in the description of the video so you can find them for yourself and go through them again so you don't just have to rely on this video every time you need the information. Remember to subscribe to my channel if you thought this video was helpful. I will be doing news updates in the future as well so you can subscribe and stay up to date on all the news that are coming out on your BNO situation. And if you're not as familiar with English as you are with Cantonese, this my friend uh, the Apollo channel he is really good at explaining everything that that uh, when it comes to BNO passports and the whole UK situation he's really good at making regular updates explaining everything to you so if you want someone in Cantonese to explain this to you uh, he's the guy to go to so consider subscribing to his channel as well so you have both the English and the Cantonese version when the updates come out Thank you so much for watching. I hope you have a safe journey if you take this offer from the UK government. Have a great day and I'll see you in the next video.